Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and you join me in my observatory. I've got the roof off and I'm currently imaging a target um, during a period where there's no astronomical darkness. So between May and August in the UK, we don't actually have any true astronomical darkness. However, um, that's not going to stop me. I'm going to try and capture something I've uh, like the look of for some time which is a wolf rayet star called WR134. I've seen some really nice images of this online and it's made me really want to have a go at this uh, myself. Um, I'm going to be doing another video uh, on this target um, because I'm introducing some new filters that uh, were given to me by Alter Astro um, and to try out and um, they are proving to be absolutely fantastic. So we'll show you the gear I'm using for tonight. We'll hopefully get some more imaging and um, yeah, fingers crossed, we're gonna get a lovely picture. My name's Glenn, you're watching Astrobloke. So, uh, things are cooling down on my rigs. Uh, we've got a beautiful clear night. So before everything gets started, what I'd like to do is quickly show you my rig and what we've got going on. So this is my fabulous CT10 Ultra Newtonian Scope by Orion Optics UK. And uh, I absolutely love this scope. It's, uh, it's my workhorse, it does everything I want it to do, it does all my images. So on the back here I've got the two 600mm Pro camera and I've got that bolted to the Pegasus Astro Indigo 2 inch 7 position fill wheel and importantly what I've got in here is the Altair Astro 3 nanometer ultra SHO filters and these are absolutely fantastic they um, surprisingly they, they're allowing me to image no matter what the light conditions are so we haven't got true astronomical darkness no problem the contrast on these filters are fantastic I run everything off of here from a main PC uh, because it also controls my observatory roof but there's a Pegasus Powerbox Advance on there and this is all sitting on my trusty, let me just see if I can show you, my trusty EQ8R Pro, uh, which is just an absolute workhorse. Um, I bought this used, um, although it was basically in as new condition, um, and I've never had to touch it basically. I put it on the uh, pier, and it's just performed perfectly. It's the, it's the, just an absolutely brilliant observatory mount. I think it's a little bit heavy and big to be something that you want to be dragging in and out. Um, it would soon uh, test test me, I think, beyond my patience. But sitting on a pier, all set up, <clears throat> switch it on and go, uh, it's brilliant. And it really but pretty much gives me 0.3 to 0.5 guiding, depending on the seeing at the night. So I really have no complaints whatsoever. So I've been imaging WR134 uh, for quite a few nights, um, about sort of seven or eight in all, um, and things are coming together really nicely. Um, I've put some details together for the uh, video for Altair Astro's uh, filters, because um, I really want to show, show them off, because they're, they're absolutely fantastic. But I was talking to my good friend Simon of Simon's Astro, and if you haven't checked out his channel, please do, because it's really good, and he's got some lovely uh, images on there. Um, and I know he would really appreciate the support. Well, Simon, funny enough, was imaging the exact same target that I've been looking at. So we got ourselves together, and we had a little chat, we looked at our data, and we started to formulate a plan. 
um, and the idea is to get as much data together that we can um, and then meet up and have a look at that data, start editing it and see what we think and what we like from the image and we're both sort of hoping that we're going to come to an agreement of how we want it to look and what direction to go in so uh, yeah that'd be really good. I'm going to get this running anyway and then um, I'll be giving Simon a call, make sure he's uh, grabbing some data too. He doesn't live too far from me, about 20 minutes away. Um, so I'm sure he's got clear skies tonight, like I have, and um, he'll be imaging too. Right, I'm uh, gonna knock these lights off so that everything's ready to go. Uh, lift off in about 19 minutes, so that's good. Everything will be cooled and settled down with the atmosphere out here and uh, away it will go. Right, I'll, uh, we'll catch you later and later on in the video show you, hopefully, one of the best images I've actually managed to take today. So I'm really looking forward to that too. See you later. All right, shut that door there. I'm back in my warm room and it's nice and warm in here. It's actually quite chilly out there, which is surprising because it's been really warm during the day. I've got my iPad here, which uh, there's a little camera in there so I can keep an eye on everything. I want to get back to the house actually. Um, unfortunately, I'm home alone at the moment. My two little doggies need looking after. They get a little bit lonely if I leave them on their own and get up to mischief more than likely. So I'll be indoors and I can keep an eye on this from my laptop. But uh, yep, yeah, I can see what my scopes are up to, which is a really nice thing. And um, yeah, it's a, a real boon actually to have a warm room. I can sit in here and chill, maybe listen to some music or do some editing. Um, and at the same time, keep an eye on everything that's going on uh, with my imaging. But um, yeah, what I'm gonna do now, um, I'm actually gonna shut this down. I'm gonna make my way back indoors and get on my laptop. I can watch everything from there. Um, and then, uh, yeah, hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll have a really good night of imaging. So the forecast says it's gonna be clear all night, which is amazing. Um, and I've got my other rig set up as well, my VX6, um, which is on my EQ6R Pro. And on there, I've got the 294mm Pro camera. Um, and that's shooting through Antlia LRGB uh, SHO. We're at F5 there, not having any problems. Um, you'll see in the video that I do uh, for Altair that one of the most amazing things about the Altair filters is... Um, I'm not getting any issues with the extra speed that I get by putting the coma corrector on my CT10. So my CT10's native uh, focal length is 1200 millimeters and f4.8. And at that, no problems at all with the Antlia filters. Um, but as soon as I put the Starizona Nexus coma corrector on, which uh, is a reducing coma corrector, it takes the scope down to 900 millimeters and it makes it f3.6. And as soon as I went to f3.6 below f point, uh, below f4, I started getting a flare on my uh, bright stars, um, which was not a good thing. Um, and talking to Altair, this is quite common. Most filters are made down to about f4 or above. However, the Altair three nanometer SHO filters do not suffer with it. So um, I've done some testing for Altair as well and absolutely no hint of flare or problems at all at F3.6. Although they report on their website that they're only designed to work down to 4.8, they actually work fine at F3.6, where they are for me. So I'm really happy with that. Um, they're doing a fantastic job. But my other rig, that's on uh, a really big target called uh, Lacerta's Nebula. I think I'm pronouncing that right. But anyway, um, it's an unusual target. I saw a couple on Astrobin. I thought I'd give it a go. Um, but even with the fourth third sensor, and it's only at 750 millimeters, um, I've got to do an eight panel mosaic. So, hmm. Should be interesting. I'm on panel two tonight, so fingers crossed, they'll stitch together well, and then we can go on to panel three. So my plan is to do a panel per night, 
And then if it needs more, I'll do another panel for each eight, another eight nights, and hopefully we'll start getting close to an image that I want. Anyway, I'm gonna go back indoors now and make myself a coffee, make sure the dogs are okay and behaving themselves, and then we'll hopefully check in on the scopes. Okay, so I've managed to get back indoors. Surprise, surprise. I won't be left alone. I'm going to have this little monster sitting on my lap. The other one's sitting over there. <laughs> Actually, she's proper out of it. Let me show you. You want to have Anna? Is she sleeping? Yep. She's sleeping. So, what we're going to be doing then, um, I'm just going to log into my PC um, and I'll um, show you what I've got going on if I can. Turn the telly off, we don't need that on. Okay, so let's have a look. On here, we've got our Nina. This is our sequence all set up and it's running. In three minutes' time, everything's going to kick off so what we're going to do we've got two instances of nina running on here we've got this is my main rig and if we open it again and go on my mini pc which is my second rig which is my eq6 we're on panel two it should be i'll just double check that panel two yep so that's ready to go and that's going to kick off also at 9.18, so in two minutes time. Excellent, so everything's ready to go. So let's call up. My cameras. Now one of the things I don't like about Ring is um, you have to sort of log yourself in and then once you've logged yourself in it won't stay it'll only stay logged in for up to a month um, and then you've got to go through this whole security rigmarole again so it's a bit of a pain right here we go so here are my cameras we'll go full screen and it's really nice to be able to keep an eye on them I've got my sequences in place so uh, the routines will start very shortly and um, yeah away we'll go so let's have a look what we got uh, it should be starting so any second we should see some movement from a scope and there goes the CT10 never ceases to uh, impress me when that thing's slewing. As you can see, the target I've gone for is very up in the sky, so should be good for all night. Now, while I'm waiting for the VX6 to go, because I've got that calling uh, I had the CT10 was already called. The One of the things with mosaics that a lot of people have a problem with is getting their mosaics to line up. I'm just going through a little routine here. Oh, it's lovely and clear sky. Look at those stars. Fantastic. So we'll have a look at the VX6 here. That's not quite ready to go yet. Let's just have a look. Just have a look at the situation. We're down to three degrees, so it's cooling. It's not far off, and then it will get slewing and do its routine. So one of the things you need to add in when you're doing a mosaic is um, within your routine, in, especially in Nina, is you can actually add solve and rotate. So you need to have a rotation in it. Because what will happen is your panels won't be uh, straight with each other. So as long as you've got the rotate in there, 
um, when you take the coordinates from the framing it will make sure that all of your panels are rotated correctly so they're in line with each other so that's an important thing um, to do especially when doing a mosaic because I've done it before where I've not rotated and you can end up with one slightly wonky and then you can end up with a gap and things um, and so that you get the, the best line up have rotation on I'm expecting because I've done panel one that's okay when I do panel two it might go I've got to rotate it now if that happens I'm gonna have to go down to the obsi and give it a little tweak but we'll see whether it does it or not I'm hoping because we got the first rotation bang on the other rotations will be fine we shall see so we'll watch it and we'll see what it does So I am here to see my friend Glenn and I'm going to borrow some of his data. Knock knock, anybody home? Hello mate. Hello mate. How are you? Uh, I'm on the scrounge. Oh yeah, which one? Yeah, I'm on the scrounge. I understand you're doing WR134. I am. Uh, right. How about putting our data together mate? Because there's no way I'm going to get 50 hours on this. So yeah. um yeah absolutely what do you reckon yeah no idea. how many hours have you got i've got about 25 oh, it's very similar actually i've got about 28 i think oh that'll right. be good so, yeah that'll be okay. really good actually get that together that'll, that'll look amazing excellent all right mate well let's get together and uh see if we can get an image out of this all right let's do it nice Well, I can see you've got your hands full. I'm busy <laughs> so, today. Yes, yeah, so uh, yeah, it's great work on that image, Glenn. So yeah. thanks for the share of the data. It's brilliant. I'm, I'm really pleased with the outcome of that. So I think it's all it's, good. Um, come out really well, Simon. The data Excellent. we got was really good. And considering, as we've said several times to each other, we had no astronomical darkness. Yeah, that was a challenge. We've, uh, <laughs> we've got some really nice, nice data there. Let's come out oh, with this picture. Do you like the picture? Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Right. Thanks, mate. Take care, mate. Cheers. See ya. See ya.